welcome back to my channel diamonds and washi my name is katie and today i am here with my weekly whip and chat if you're new or not sure what it means whip stands for work in progress and chat stands for chat it just means we're gonna hang out together today and talk about crafting and life and all the things for probably around the next hour or so so feel free to pull out a crafting project to work alongside me if you like, or you can treat this like a podcast, whatever works for you. I'm going to be working on a diamond painting today. And um, like I said, just I feel like there's some, bless you. <laughs> That's my husband in the background working. Um, uh, there's always stuff to catch up on. I always really look forward to these, um, these weekly check-ins. So let me tell you about what I'm working on and with today. I have um, the kit, The First Dragon by Raven Phelan from Diamond Art Club. I think that I was working on this with you guys last week as well. Um, but we are in, I think, this section right about here. We're going to have a nice color spread that you're going to see. But I, the un end of the month is fast approaching and I really was thinking that this would be my February dragon finish kit. And I am starting to wonder if I'm actually gonna get it finished before the end of the month. So um, we're gonna be working on this one together today for sure and see if I can make some progress. As far as accessories go, I am gonna be using this pen from Enablers Outpost. I think I ordered this one maybe as a custom, um, but they make really, really pretty blanks in-house and then turn them as well. I love this pen. <laughs> it's so pretty. And then in my single placer, I'm going to be using, this is actually Patty Wax Super Sticky. It has seen a lot of use. I've had this for three years, still have plenty, still going strong and still works fine. <laughs> so this is from Patty Wax. And then we're going to use this Lucky Birthday Dot Dot Putty in my multi-placer. It's, it's not my birthday. I just was like, What's some putty that I got in a recent small shop haul that I haven't uh, used in a while? And Butterfly Effect Wears was it. Um, just happens to say lucky birthday. So, hey, if it's your birthday, say that I got, I'm got. i using this putty in honor of you and your birthday. <laughs> and then I'm going to be using this tray from Bijou Bliss. And I was just thinking that I've been neglecting this company. I need to go do some shopping so badly. Um, but they have these magnetic lids. They really, I feel like, kind of popularized this this concept and uh, they, yeah, they have the magnetic lids and then I misplaced the tray stopper, but there is a tray stopper that is magnetic as well. Um, but I just, I love the pink and the rose gold. It's so happy. And then this minder was a gift from a viewer um, a while back and I believe it was converted from a pin and I don't know what store it is from, um, but it just, the colors and everything matched this painting too perfectly not to use it today. So let me go ahead and get my pen loaded up and ready to go and we will be off off here. So hello, happy Monday. <clears throat> I hope that you had a really nice weekend and that your week is off to a great start. How are you doing? Um, I always look forward to hearing from you guys in the comments, letting me know like what you're working on while we chatted and what you've been up to this week and how you're doing. Um, and I've been, you know, it comes and goes in fits and spurts where I feel like I'm able to uh, keep up with responding to comments. And uh, I, I, you know, always trying out different things to see if I can find ways to be more consistent or get into a rhythm of it. But for the moment, as of the time of this filming, um, I am trying to at least heart react to your comments. Oh, look how pretty that is. What does this one smell like? Oh, it smells very fruity. I can't place what it's reminding me of something in particular, but I'm, oh, I can't bring it to mind exactly what it is. That's, oh, do you ever have that happen? We were like, I know, I know this, <laughs> the scent or, you know, this, this tune or something like that. And then you just can't place it. And then it's just, it sticks in your brain. And then you wake up and sit up straight in bed at like three in the morning that night and go, oh, it was this <laughs> every time, every time. Um, it is currently Sunday evening, which I is usually the evening that I will film my whip and chats. Um, we had a pretty quiet weekend here at home, and uh, Adam was out and about a little bit, but I had a pretty quiet weekend at home with the kiddos, um, and it was nice. It was it felt very restful. They were really tired and just kind of over it by the time school was out on Friday and so I was like oh it's good that it's the weekend I half wonder if we're all it's that you know it's that time of year where people are getting sick and stuff and so 
wonder if we're all just kind of trying to, our bodies are fighting off potentially getting sick. I am thankfully healthy for the moment, but um, knock on wood, quick, quick. Anyway, <clears throat> multi-placer is loaded up. And then I need wax. I think I need to clean this one out. I was using this pen earlier, but I didn't have patty wax in it. Um, you know, something I would like to maybe give another try to, and I'm curious if this is something you guys like. I know I talk a lot about how much I love the metal multi-placers, like the stainless steel metal multi-placers. This one is a 12-placer from Diamond Art Club. It's one of their newer thin, like skinny multi-placers. That, that's it for me. That's all I'm going to use now. They're so, the, the, it's the thin, the thinness of them, like left to right. Like they're so skinny that it's so much easier for me to sort of see where I'm placing and place accurately. Anyway, but I know that they also make um, stainless steel single tips where you can either um, just swap out. You can actually use a pair of pliers and pull out just this brass tip from the plastic part and then put in like a metal tip that's like just this part and then sometimes they have like an all-in-one metal tip where you take this whole plastic part out and replace it with it's all metal and historically oops historically when i've tried those i actually don't tend to like them or have much luck with them but it's been a little while since i've i have tried them and i wonder I don't know. I wonder if maybe I could get it to work for me now. So if you have ever used like the stainless steel single tips and you have a particular, you know, brand or type that you like, would you let me know in the comments? I would really, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Now, I know a lot of you really enjoy, and you've commented before that you really like, they make these angled single tips that's like it's bent so imagine that like it comes out at the end here and then there's a part that like actually bends down at like a 45 degree angle like this um that doesn't person doesn't work for me and how i play so that's not necessarily the kind of tip i'm looking for um but it's just a straight tip but i just I'm like i've tried the everlasting ones the ones where you just why is that I feel like it's not peeling up neatly hold on a second Oh, I know what happened. I think the washi tape ended up a little bit on the glue there. Okay. Sorry, troubleshooting. <laughs> um, okay, yes, yeah, so I tried the Everlasting Tips one, but I think it's been like a year and a half, two years since I've worked with one of those. And it was one of the ones that, yeah, you just, you pulled this out and put the Everlasting, you know, just that little metal portion in. So I don't know, I don't know. I'm trying to remember if I've tried Diamond Art Clubs all in one single placers. But if I did, they probably, it probably just wasn't my jam. So anyway, sound off in the comments. <laughs> if you're like, hey, this, this stainless steel single placer is fantastic. Um, I always appreciate your recommendations. But anyway, these are bliss trays are so nice. I really love their, they do such a nice job with their lids. Um, like they, it's really different from what I feel like I see a lot of other companies doing, but it's like, the way it's like inset the design and they've done some really cute um ones for like events and whatnot like they sponsored drills and chills last year and do really cute like seasonal ones too so yeah gotta go gotta go shop i have some shopping to do um it largely comes from i did my tray stash video that went up today which will be uh, sunday and um as i was pulling out all of my trays and going through them and getting them organized for that video, it just sort of, it was bringing to mind some tray shops and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I really need to go back and, um, and try this shop again. Or, you know, oh my gosh, I should go see if they have any more colors. It was bittersweet to do that video though, in some ways, because there were a number of shops that I had like one, maybe one tray from. And I was like, ooh, I haven't really seen or heard anything of this shop in a while. Let me go see if they're still open because I thought I'm gonna go ahead and check all these shops before I, you know, talk about them in the video. And that would kind of help inform whether or not I included a link to those shops in the description box. And I mean, there were probably five or six shops that had since shut down. And that's always, it's such a bummer. And I always, you know, I, I know small shops, it's a really volatile world for that. And I always hope that like, it's like, I hope that they're doing well. Like I hope, 
you know, it's it's always a bummer when a shop has to shut their doors. Like I hope maybe like it was just for the best, something better came along um, and that those shop owners are doing well. But um, yeah, it made me just felt a little sad, <laughs> a, a tiny bit guilty. I was like, oh, what if I would have tried to shop with them more? But I know you can't, you can't operate that way. But um, then still there were shops that I unboxed and I was like, oh, or that I was talking about in that video and was like, oh yeah. And then I'd go and check them. They're still open and, um, seeming to be doing well. So, um, feel free to go check out that video if you're interested. I, um, oh man, let me tell you what, that was an interesting <laughs> experience filming that last night. Um, I, sorry, there's something in there. I actually... I thought that I wanted to do that video one way and it had to do with like what I had in the background. Originally, I was going to just have the kind of backdrop be that initial spread of trays. It was just like a variety of different companies uh, just kind of sitting there in you know, in the, in the front, like in, in the foreground and then, um, or in the background. And then I thought, well, I'll just pull out like one tray at a time and like show it and then move it out of the way. But then there's always this like pretty backdrop. I got, I'm not kidding you guys, like 20 to 25 minutes into filming that video. And I just went, I don't like this. I don't think I like this. I think that I want to do this differently where um, I start with a blank space and then I'm like laying out the trays as I go in batches. And then people can kind of see trays side by side with each other. Um, I And I just, I thought it would be actually less distracting with not a ton of stuff going on in the background the whole time. I don't know. I don't know if that was, you know, what people would have enjoyed more, but there was just the sense of, oh man, am I really about to just go ahead and throw away the 20 to 25 minutes of filming I've already done? And I thought, yeah, I really think that I do want to, and that's okay. Um, I, I actually, I try to, as much as I can, to do enough sort of prep and mental work that I can do most of my videos in a really minimal number of like takes or clips. Um, I, I try not to be too, I don't know, like I don't write out scripts for myself at all. The most that I will do is for whip and chats because I am very forgetful and I, but I really like to talk for a while with you guys is I do have just a jotted down list of notes off to the side, just sort of reminding me of like, Oh, here's some things that happened this week that I might want to talk about. Um, in case I get to a point in, sort of the natural flow of conversation where I'm like, uh, I don't know what else, like I'm just blanking. I'm not sure what else to talk about on this subject or I can't remember what else I wanted to talk about next. So that's, but that's about as far as I go. I don't script things out. Um, but sometimes I will, you know, do a little bit more editing on the back end as far as like cutting out like awkward, you know, pauses, or if I kind of stumbled over my words or something, I don't know. I'll, I'll do a little bit of editing sometimes, but I try to keep it, um, I try to keep it feeling just very relaxed and very authentic here. And I think that there's absolutely a way to do, um, some, some editing and some, you know, tweaking and some planning and it still be very like authentic and real. Um, but to me it's, it's more when I'm, I feel like it gets to be a distraction for me and potentially for you guys. I'm like, okay, let's just do a little bit of tweaking. And that's, you know, I don't think that that means that this is, I don't know, too formulaic or scripted or something. Uh, I just, it's what works for me. Uh, different things are going to work for different content creators. And uh, it's all, whatever people choose to do is totally, totally fine. Your people will find you. <laughs> but yeah, so I did, I did decide, I just thought, you know, I'm just not going to be happy with it. And uh, went back to the beginning of that tray stash video, started over, and I was much happier with how it turned out. Thankfully, I was filming that on a Saturday night. I didn't have to get up for anything the next morning, and so it was fine that I was up a bit late with, um, you know, finishing up the editing and then got to export it, got to transfer it over. Like, I do a set of edits, like, on my phone, like, initial edits on my phone, which is what I film on, and then I do... I, I um, airdrop it over to my computer and uh, there's more functionality in the programs I have on my computer and I'll do um, another round of edits that are for other things um, like related to like you know some color correction or whatnot and audio and that is easier to do on my computer as opposed to my phone but 
um, sometimes a lot of the waiting is just waiting for things to move, waiting for it to export from the program, waiting for it to upload to YouTube, that sort of thing. Um, but I, yeah, no, it was fun to do that video and I would like for that to be the first in a series of accessories stash videos. I asked in that video if people wanted to, to go ahead and leave in the comments of that video, what accessory stash would you be most interested in seeing next and i think like two or three, only two or three people left their opinions which thank you so much if you were one of those people but it's, and it's completely fine if you weren't i don't mind but i'll ask you guys here because you guys are always very um responsive here in my whip and chat but we've done trays and the next accessories video i'm thinking could either be an updated pen stash video because it's been i think two years since i've done a pen stash video and goodness knows I have a lot more pens now <laughs> and I've, I've actually de-stashed some of uh, the pens that were probably in that video so I could do a pen video I could do a putty and wax video um, I could do a cover binder video but I am less excited about that just because I cover binders are the particular one particular accessory that I have had the hardest time retaining what shops they're from and so I just don't know that I have it in me to go through and try to track down all the shops that those minders are from at the moment. So I prefer not minders. So, okay, pens, wax and putty, or I could do washi tape, but washi tape is really a lot of stuff from Simply Gilded, but I could still, I'd happily show you washi tape. So of those three, what accessory stash video would you be most interested in seeing next? Okay. Um, I also was happy to get up my 50%, my halfway check-in. Um, actually, technically a little bit over halfway, <laughs> check in on my cross stitch conversion project. I was very happy that I took, um, I think it was a couple of weeks um, in between actually finishing that fourth panel and then, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, a little something stuck in my throat, like a little tickle. Okay. Um, in between finishing that panel and then actually doing the update because I felt like I had the chance to catch my breath, collect my thoughts, figure out, okay, how am I really feeling about this? And um, it didn't feel like I was going into it like really emotional. <laughs> and I really enjoyed hearing um, your thoughts and feedback. And I feel like you guys gave me a lot of really nice insight um, and some good thoughts on how to tackle subsequent panels in a way that will hopefully help me avoid um, those feelings of, you know, frustration and burnout. Um, I, I am quite honestly, I am feeling like I would like to start that next panel here soon. But, um, since I am trying to see if I can complete this kit before the end of February, I, I don't see myself starting that panel before the end of February. And then frankly, as soon as I get this kit done, I'm going to have to go hop right back over into my, um, my Castile fan art custom because I just, the, the reality is right now I'm diamond painting slower. I am continuing to find myself, um, sort of drawn towards doing, um, other things like, I don't know, just keeping up, keeping up with YouTube comments. No, uh, just various other things. Um, and I'm okay with that. Like it's, I'm really, I have, like I said in some past videos, have just really come to terms with, okay, this is just a season where I'm going to be diamond painting a little bit less and that's fine. Um, or diamond painting slower, like getting through projects slower for me, slower for me. But that means that if I have projects that I would like to try to complete on any sort of schedule that I need to adjust accordingly and know that, no, this isn't a project I'm going to knock out in one week um, anymore. <laughs> this is going to be a project that is going to potentially take me a little longer. And uh, so that's why I'm like, oh, shoot. So I need to finish this and I need to, to work on that fan art custom. Um, but yeah, doing that cross stitch conversion check in video, I felt was really, it felt good. Like it felt good to be able to do that. And I thought that um, I just felt like I was able to articulate really what my feelings were. Uh, interestingly, I as I had mentioned in that video, how I was, I'm starting to really try to brainstorm some different ways that you could potentially attach these panels to each other um, for display. And because uh, I haven't quite figured that out yet. And I want to do that for you guys, even though I'm not planning to do that. I'm not displaying it in my home myself. But for those of you that might work on a conversion project and um, break those into panels, because it, otherwise the canvas would be just really too large to work on, I want to at least have some ideas for you. 
what someone did point out, and I feel like this was a really, really good point, um, that, and it also had, had occurred to me as well, that the sheer weight of these, the eight panels of my project would be just so, I feel like so incredibly heavy. Um, you would have to have some really seriously heavy duty, um, I don't know, hangers, frames to be able to hang that all attached together at once. And I really liked the idea that, you know, one person had shared about, um, about just sort of, uh, what's it called? I'm blanking on it. Uh, where you do like a wrapped frame um, around like, oh my gosh, is it just called a wrap frame? Why my brain? I'm so, so, so scatterbrained. It feels like the past couple of days. Um, I think, hopefully you guys know what I mean. Um, and just do each panel on one of those. And it'll just kind of be like almost an art installation style where it's like, no, they're not attached, but they're, they're like just right next to each other. And I feel like that could work actually. Um, especially with the nature of the artwork it being shelves. So I don't know, I kind of have in my head that I would be interested to um, try out like a few different options because I have all those different panels to work with and then I can kind of demo all of them um, or just a f at least a few different options. That way it's like you can decide which of these options would work best for your specific circumstance, but that is going to take some more brain power and work for me to really um, figure out and figure out like how to demo and stuff. I don't think of myself as being particularly handy or frankly, even crafty. Like, yes, diamond painting is a craft, but I feel like diamond painting is mostly, can you follow directions? Well, <laughs> um, so I just, it's like, I don't know that I, I would feel good about being able to sort of come up with those things like on my own. So I'll be watching some YouTube videos and leaning into some <laughs> friends with more expertise than I have uh, to see, see what we can do there. Um, I, uh, I was kicking around though, because when I was doing that, that video, I decided, I don't know that I'm loving that I'm just calling this like a cross stitch conversion project, because I feel like sometimes there's something like lost in translation in a way where people don't necessarily know that it's like a diamond painting. I'm thinking almost like with, you know, YouTube and what people are going to search and stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of playing around with different names that I might kind of give that at least in my videos or in the, you know, the thumbnail. And I was like, maybe about like cross stitch diamond painting. Maybe that sort of communicates more clearly, like cross stitch conversion. That's like converting it to what? What do you mean converting a cross stitch? Are you taking like an already cross stitched piece and turning it into something else? Like, I think it just, I don't, there's not like a really elegant way to describe this particular kind of project in my opinion, but um, that's just, yeah, that's been on my brain. Like what else could I call it that I feel like is, that makes like more sense, I guess. Um, for a second, I just thought that I put a bunch of diamonds down on the wrong symbol. No, we're good, we're good. Um, so I, there are a couple of new Diamond Art Club releases that are coming out today, Monday, the day this video is going up, it's tomorrow for me, and I'm torn. I kind of like both of them a lot. Um, there's the Stanley Morrison dragon that is, of, uh, is it Irish coffee? Is that what it is? But it's so cute. And I think that Stanley Morrison's dragons just look so cool, but it's like all colors that I don't think I'd really enjoy working with. And so I, and it's big, so I don't think I'm actually, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get it. Um, that's, yeah, I just, I don't know if I can do it. And then the Hannah Lynn, it's like, well, I'm not actually normally a Hannah Lynn person, but the nostalgia factor is real for me, you guys. Um, I don't know if you guys saw one of the, one of the things that I was talking about in last week's whip and chat i think i made a passing comment about how i had mostly unplugged from social media while i was out of town and then it felt like when i kind of was checking back in and i was like oh my gosh there's like dumpster fire here dumpster fire there just like lots lots going on and um one of those things was sort of the announcement people finding out that like oh Di um, diamond art club and hannah lynn are, are um parting ways and my impression because i did try to do you know some reading and um catch up on like what all had been said and stuff and it i mean both of them put out statements and it sounds like it's you know relatively amicable it's like oh, just 
it just wasn't going to work anymore. And you know, that happens sometimes. There's not necessarily something nefarious going on, but it's, I don't know. It's kind of like, um, like it feels like an end of an era a little bit. And it's, it's like Hannah Lynn has just been a staple of diamond art club since, I mean, since I started diamond painting. And so it's, I'm a little bit going like, oh shoot, are there any, um, even though this isn't necessarily an artist that I, I gravitate towards, um, I've unboxed her sometimes on my channel and she's one of my best friends, like favorite artists. And, um, I'm just like, shoot, like now it's, it's going to be like, maybe one of the reasons I didn't necessarily always buy kits of hers is I thought, oh, well, there's always going to be plenty of Hannah Lynn kits at Diamond Art Club. Um, I, yeah, I just was kind of a foregone conclusion for me. It felt like, and you know, that's no longer going to be the case. So I did order a couple, um, you know, the other day I, because I had been unplugged from social media, I didn't find out really about this until, I mean, a, a little while after it had happened. And I think a lot of people had already gone and done a lot of shopping on the diamond art club website. And, um, so I just, I picked up a couple and I have one or two in my, my stash as well that I'll, it's like, okay, well, those are rainy day kits now. <laughs> um, I've had Angie and Oliver in my stash since the first year I started diamond painting and I, I've almost de-stashed it once or twice. And I'm so glad that I didn't because that is just a really adorable, really adorable kit. Um, but anyway, they, they're still going to have some more releases. Um, this year and uh, from what they've said and one of them is apparently coming out tomorrow and it's um, very like I don't, I don't remember the name of it but it's like very St. Patrick's Day themed like there's lots of greens and uh, there's like this beautiful rainbow and there's part of me it's like I should grab that like that's really pretty and we know that these Hannah Lynn kits are, are limited so um, I may try to grab that tomorrow but I have a feeling it is going to be quite the mad rush and hopefully by the time this whip and chat goes up that will already have happened and then i'm not gonna you guys won't have to think that i was trying to stir up any like fomo that's that's not that's not really my style um i just you know like i said it just i just was kind of coming to terms with like wow that's like a that's a that's a big change um then again it, it is awesome to see how many new artists have joined diamond art club recently a lot of artists that have turned into like must-haves for me and so you know and who knows what the future holds really as far as you know maybe she'll come back someday or maybe not or maybe there will you know just continue to be a lot of amazing new artists that are are coming out so you know there's there's certainly plenty of diamond paintings in my stash it's not like i'm ever gonna ever gonna run out of any to do i was updating my gems flow the other day which gems flow it's um one word and is an app that you can use a lot of diamond painters actually use to track their diamond paintings um i find it so incredibly handy i've been using it for over three years now and um it's just it's so nice because you can like you can put in a picture if you want you can put in multiple pictures if you want i always put in like the stock image and then i'll put in like the size and the drill shape what shop it's from um and you can even go further and add like what date you got it and what date you worked on it and finished it you can mark if it's you know you've ordered it but you don't have it in hand yet or you have it in hand but you haven't started it yet or you've completed it or you've gifted it it's just there's so many ways that you can track your diamond paintings and I find it incredibly handy but I was doing some catch-up because what tends to happen is that I'll go um, a few weeks <laughs> without updating my gems flow um, and then I'm like shoot I gotta go update that or I'm gonna really fall behind and I'm not gonna I'm gonna forget about kits that I need to add to it so I was doing one of those catch-ups the other day and I crossed like a new um, a new hundred mark <laughs> in my stash and I was like oh my gosh I've got got to organize a d stash again there's just there's just a lot um but my completed you know number is over 150 so i'm like well it doesn't exceed my exceed my life expectancy yet <laughs> but yes i have to decide if i want that hannah lynn kit tomorrow <sighs> decisions decisions as far as my thoughts on like the other thing that was a big topic of conversation last weekend with regards to there was a a new release that had come out and then 
there was like a oh it got then it got pulled because they realized that it had ai and they thought the artist hadn't disclosed it but then they issued a correction saying no the artist did disclose it but there's miscommunication on our end um but we're still pulling it because it doesn't meet our standards and um, I don't really, I'm not comfortable talking um, at length about my personal, uh, you know, opinions and convictions about my, my thoughts about artificial intelligence, you know, programs or tools, um, in large part because I just, I, I feel like it's, there's not legislation in place, there's not regulation in place, it feels like it's just a giant murky gray area, um, and I tend to err on the side of caution, but I never want to tell other people how I think I'm not telling you how I think you should spend your money like that's completely your business but uh the most that I really will say and that I feel comfortable saying is that I I do value when companies um you know whatever they're doing I appreciate when they are transparent I am so thankful that there are companies out there that will say outright like in the artist profiles on their website like this artist uses AI as one of their tools um and then it's like, okay, give us the information so we can make an informed decision. That is like, I feel like that is the least that we can do. And we're in this like weird limbo where it's like legislation always lags behind, like progress in technology. There's always a lag there. But in the meantime, it's like, just give us all of the information. Um, give us all the information so we can make whatever, like whether we're like, yes, I want to buy all the AI, or whether we're like, you know, no, I don't, this isn't something that I really want to support right now. Um, or ever, I don't know. It's like, get, we can have the information. And that that is what I value most uh, at, at the moment. Um, you know, and you could probably guess kind of where my where I stand as far as like, what kits you may or may not see, you know, me unbox or sneak peek on my channel. But again, this is not, I'm not saying anything, you know, bad about people that like are, you know, using these tools or people that choose to buy, you know, things that use these tools. That's not, that's not my business. Um, but you know, anyway, I feel like that's a really touchy subject. I'm trying to handle it with like a whole lot of respect and grace and like, I feel like my, you guys, like my subscribers and viewers, you tend to, you, you guys behave like adults. So I'm not too worried about um, people getting too sassy in the comments or rude to one another. But um, that just, I don't know. Like I said, I just, I value transparency. I appreciate that like Diamond Art Club is trying to be um, transparent about what they're doing. And there are other companies out there doing similar things. And um, that's, that's the challenge that I would issue to companies in general is like, just tell, just, this because this is such a hot button topic and people have strong feelings about it really on both you know, all over the spectrum it's not even like one extreme or the other sometimes a lot of people tend to fall in the middle somewhere in between um it's like just give us all the information okay that's all i'm done with that soapbox i promise i promise um but let me see see this is where i'm like okay i want to move on to another topic but my mind is drawing a blank um oh something i wanted to get your your thoughts on um, if you're still here. <laughs> so Summer with the Masters is, I mentioned, is happening again this year. It's a, a diamond painting event that I started with my friend Jessica from Tiny Worlds of Wonder back in 2021. She is, since we, we did it for two years together, and then she is in grad school and is, you know, a little kind of on a hiatus from YouTube and definitely, I think, but go and take a look at like her content. It's still wonderful. <laughs> she's, she's done a lot of like pioneering in the diamond painting world. Tiny Worlds of Wonder is her channel. Um, I adore her and she's doing, she's doing great. But last year, uh, my, my dear friend, Anthony from a single and placing, I asked him if he would uh, join me to co-host Summer with the Masters for its third year. And yes, we are hosting together. It's happening again this year, the fourth year of Summer with the Masters. Um, and it's an event that centers around what um just it's it's public domain network but we kind of give it some specific kind of guidelines to make it really clear because when you get into like public domain artwork like in the present day that's like created in present day it gets really messy really quickly so for our purposes this event centers around old masters artwork which is artwork from um you know before the current copyright year which as of this year, 2024, that moved forward to, I believe, the year 1928 and earlier. And that's in the U.S. Other countries might have a different 
um, different copyright laws. I'm not an expert in copyright law. Um, I just know that like that's what we've based the event around is the copyright year in the United States. And uh, nearly all artwork from before that period is considered part of the public domain. It's ethical and um, you know, you're allowed to use it to get customs of or shops can use it um, as you know, diamond paintings. They're not paying licensing uh, for those. And so it, it came from um, you know, when Jessica and I were kind of brainstorming and what kind of event we wanted to do together, it's like we feel like there's this untapped well of artwork that, um, you know, this doesn't get a lot of love in the diamond painting world. We don't really see shops that are um, licensing this artwork. It's like the most you'll really see is like Starry Night by Van Gogh. Uh, and so we thought, but this, this is a really great opportunity potentially for people that um, maybe you're on a budget and want to be able to order a custom that's you know, on a budget for them and it's like there's this whole set of artwork that they can ethically use and um you know licensed artwork is that the whole world is really important to jessica and i we feel really strongly about doing right by artists and so uh we kind of just combined all the things that we were interested in kind of gaps that we saw in the like diamond painting world that, and things that we thought could serve a need which again is sort of this idea of accessibility um, as far as budget uh, restrictions and um, also some people just they'll be like I don't like the you know high color or cartoony or this or that particular style that you see at most diamond painting companies but there is so much beautiful variety in old masters artwork so many possibilities but yes yeah, so Anthony are hosting again this year we're gonna try to I need to connect with him and I just was listening to his vlog the other day where he's like I need to connect with Katie again because we wanted to get these like a preliminary announcement video out so that those of you that might want to order a custom can do so and know that it's going to be in on time for summer with the masters you're also welcome to carry over a project from past years we do not require a new start or a finish for this event because often old masters kits are very large and very confetti heavy and so we just really try to keep it as accessible and low-key of an event as possible um, but we're running into an interesting sort of a tricky set of circumstances this year, I feel like. And that is that um, as of this year in the copyright year, um, Steamboat Willie from like a particular cartoon and cartoon set, um, along with a, a one or two other characters from that same cartoon, along with the, um, I'm blanking on his name, um, a, is A. Milner, uh, the author of the Winnie the Pooh books, like that iteration like that specific like artwork and version of that character which like doesn't have the red shirt because that was like disney later but like this specific version of winnie the pooh entered the public domain um and so technically those would fall under um like artwork containing those characters the artwork itself has to have been created from before the current copyright year so for example that's why we don't as part of summer with the masters we haven't allowed um, you know, like Asia Trier does all of these variations on Starry Night. That's like, oh, it's Starry Night, but with a dinosaur, Starry Night, but with like a multipoo or something, like a dog. Um, but it's like, but no, that artwork was, even though it's based on public domain artwork, that specific artwork was created, you know, five years ago or something. It's not part of the public domain. So that's just how we've kept it really neat and clean. So um, that's why it's like, well... If we were to say like okay to like Steamboat Willie and Winnie the Pooh, we'd have to like be doing a ton of um, just of research and be and vetting to make sure that it's like the exact artwork that you're choosing to use for this. That exact artwork is from before the current copyright year, and it just feels like it has the potential to be very very messy. And so we were leaning towards like, do we like? Do we even like bring this up as a possibility? And then we're like, maybe we'll talk about it like in our whip and chats or vlogs or whatnot. Um, it's like, or do we just say like, we know that this is a part of the public domain now, but there's so many opportunities for confusion here. Like we don't want to be like, yeah, no, Steamboat Willie is fine. And people think like, oh, I can do, I can grab some fan art of Steamboat Willie or I can do Winnie the Pooh and oh, but it's Winnie the Pooh with the wearing the red shirt, but that's not the iteration that's part of the public domain. 
we just don't want, I don't know. It feels like there's just so many opportunities for confusion with this. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to tangle with Disney. <laughs> like that's not something I'm looking to do. Not that they're going to, are they going to come after us? No, like, no, really no. But, um, I just, I feel like they, they're probably are on high alert for people. They're going to be, that think they can do whatever with these, with these, um, characters and variations of it. And again, it's, but more than that, really, that's that's not the main reason. The main reason is that it just feels like there's so much opportunity for confusion. And I don't know. I don't know, you guys. So I invite your input on this one. Really, this, the spirit of the event was more to do with, like, getting into, like, some of these artists and artwork that a lot of people sort of aren't f necessarily familiar with or aren't aware that, like, oh, this is something you do, like, as a custom um, and just bringing that to the diamond painting world. So let, I'll just say we're not totally sure what how exactly we want to handle. And we thought, let's just, let's check in with some of our core audiences <laughs> as far as, um, you know, people that are watching our whip and chats or, you know, our weekly kinds of content because we know that you guys... You, you hopefully kind of know us at least to an extent that, you know, you know the heart of why we're asking and what we're asking. So if you have feelings about that, whether or not to, oops, um, include these characters and somehow find a way to, to make guidelines surrounding, like it really, you have to be able to demonstrate that this specific iteration of this art, this artwork that you're using is artwork itself that is from the, before the current copyright year, like that burden of proof is like on you. Or like, do we try to create guidelines or we just say, you know, let's just not, let's not include this part of it. Let's, <laughs> it just has the potential to be too confusing. Okay. I hope that made sense, but yes, that has been on our brains and I meant to bring it up actually a couple of weeks ago when we initially had a conversation about it. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, you guys like all these shades of pink. It's so pretty. Um, I want to fill in like the blues around it because I feel like that's going to make it really come to life. But um, we'll get, we'll see if we get there. <laughs> um, other things that have been going on that aren't necessarily crafting related. Um, last week, this past week, I did have a couple of days where I was like, oh, right. I've got like the energy and the motivation to get a couple of sort of longer term to-do list things done. I... I made an appointment with the dentist, which depending on when you're watching it, I made this video, I may be at the dentist. My appointment is Monday morning, tomorrow morning. Um, and I haven't been to the dentist in three and a half years. And it's like, I know I need to go back. <laughs> First it was like, you know, we didn't, we had a, a big change in insurance and there, there was some stuff with insurance. And then it was just like, I was out of the, the habit. Um, so I am going back. I have a cleaning scheduled and an exam and I do have one or two like a bit sensitive spots on my teeth that I really am half expecting them to go, okay, you've got a cavity. <laughs> I um, am pretty fastidious about brushing my teeth and about like oral hygiene, but I just, I cannot do anything about genetics and genetically we just, me, I, I have it. Um, my kids have it where it's just, we have really cavity prone teeth and I think it's like soft enamel and stuff, but, um, but yes, I am anxious. This is a dentist though, that, um, it's the one that I found, uh, after I had like a really bad dental experience and I found this one, I had gotten a recommendation from a friend that was like, they're really, they're really incredibly kind and understanding and patient, um, with people that have bad dental anxiety and they really were. They were very, very um, kind and gentle when I went before. And so I'm hoping, like that really set my mind, that's hopefully setting my mind at ease. But I just, I hate anything that has to do with the dentist because I have had just some really rough dental things that have gone on. But I just, I keep reminding myself, like if you don't take care of it now, it's just going to get worse. And you're still going to have to go and take care of it. So do it now before it gets any worse. So yeah, and I had, I, I made it happen. I made called last week and made the appointment. Um, so tomorrow morning. And then I also contacted um, two different companies about uh, seeing if we can get someone to come out here and um, kind of reconstruct two kitchen cabinets that we lost to water damage last year. And this has actually turned into like, it's not just 
me having a hard time with like making these calls, making it happen, but it's now it's turning into, it's hard to find someone that's willing to come out and do this project. Um, because it is a small project and there's a shortage of trades people, um, at the moment in a lot of, you know, various trades fields. And what's happening is that we're, even if we can get someone to call us back, which half the time I can't get someone to call me back when I leave a message, but even when I can get someone to call me back, um, they're like, okay, I'll, you know, let me talk to my guys or talk to my cabinet guy and see if they'll even do this project because it's small. Um, and it's, I guess like they're just, there's a big demand for them and they're wanting to do these bigger projects or projects that are done through insurance since so they can bill like a lot, <laughs> a lot more than it's like someone just sort of paying just like, which we're not, we're not doing it through insurance. So it just has turned into a whole thing where it's like, I just, I just, I kind of just find someone that's willing to come out and do it because I don't know. We actually had at one point, one person tell us like, you should just save up for a couple of years until you can do like a whole kitchen reno. And the way my jaw about hit the floor and I thought, I don't know how out of touch you are with like the current like status of the economy and like most of my generation's like financial situation. But like, no, I, there's, there's no way that like, if I were to magically have enough money to do a kitchen reno, I wouldn't be spending on a kitchen reno. Like there are a lot of other things that would take a bigger priority in my life. I'm not just going to be like, okay, I know I'll save up, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars to do a whole kitchen reno. Like also how in the world would that even happen in a couple of, sure. In a couple of years, I'll save that up. Sure. I'll give you a call. Um, it just felt incredibly out of touch. And I thought, I just, I, okay. <laughs> um, I'm, I don't want to make any generalizations about like generational differences, but I, that was just, that was a moment where I thought, wow, wow. Okay. Um, uh, that's not happening, but, um, yeah, it's just oh, been a whole thing. But I just one of these days, I'm going to get someone that will call me back and be willing to come out and do this project. There's one guy I have to follow up with tomorrow, and I'm crossing my fingers that he's going to tell me, okay, yes, my cabinet guy said he'd do it. Um, so anyway, that's the joys of homeownership. <laughs> um but I'm trying to try to get things out. We got it. We have our new glass door. Like the, we, we had that ordered and that was replaced on, on Tuesday. And so now there's not, you know, we're not dealing with any remnants of broken glass. I feel much, 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 much better about all of that. <sighs> the kids are all recovered. Well, I guess Michael wasn't sick. He just had the cactus hand, but no, all is well. No other issues with cactus spines. Connor is finishing up his antibiotics and is, you know, totally on the mend from being sick. And they, you know, back in their school routine this past week. Um, and Connor's already asking, he's like, can we go back to Arizona and see grandma and grandpa again before they, before they leave? And I was like, Oh no, buddy. Like, I don't know that that's really going to be practical, but my mom is coming out next month. Um, she is going to stay for a week and is, I probably, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, uh, you know, I repeat myself a lot, <laughs> but she's going to be out here for a week. Um, and it's going to overlap with the supernatural convention that I'm going to up in Burbank, which I know I've talked about that a lot. Um, so anyway, I just was, you know, reassuring Connor. I'm like, you will at least still get to see grandma. Like, no, you won't see grandpa, but, um, grandma will be here to get to you know, spend lots of good time with her. And I am getting really excited for this convention though. Like just, I swear every day they, they'll be announcing guests, more guests for it. Like it feels like nearly every day or every week leading up to the actual convention happening. They just announced Mark Shepard is going to be there. This, um, <clears throat> that announcement went out this past week and I was really thinking that he was not going to make it cause he just, oh, poop. no, you guys, <laughs> shoot, I placed a bunch of the wrong symbol. Okay. Hold on, I can fix this. I just looked down and realized that. I thought it was placing on the double dots and nope. Placing on the little, well, I have an inappropriate name for this symbol I'm not gonna say. I'll just call it the hat though. Um, okay, hold on. That wasn't this one. It's all these dark ones. I can, I can, I can make this happen. Oh, and I'm gonna scratch up these drills. Have you noticed that with, especially it feels like Diamond Art Club's newer square drills. Like if you, maybe it's not just even these. But it's like if you scrape the tweezers on them just wrong, it like scratches um, the top of the diamond. And then I feel like I don't even want to use it. I'm like, well, I don't want to use that because it's scratched now. 
Um, but anyway, what was I saying? Oh, but Mark Shepard's going to be there. And that to me was a surprise because he had like a massive heart attack a few months ago. And um, which one was it? Was it this one too? No, that one goes there. This one does not. Oh. You see, even seasoned diamond painters, we make mistakes like this. Okay. I think that can go. Yeah, that one can go there. Okay. <coughs> Almost there. Anyway, so yes, gearing up for, for that. Um, and then what else is going on? I guess I can talk about what I'm reading, watching, and listening to. So uh, reading, nothing really new on that front, though I am, um, I don't know if you guys follow my friend Kate, Diamond Painting and Dr. Pepper. She is going to be doing a read-along starting, I th think, March 1st. She's been talking about it in her whip and chats, but um, they're going to be reading um, one of the Brandon Sanderson books. And I'm debating, it's like, I'm hoping my reading bug is going to be back by then and I can join in on that because that would be really fun. Um, I read a lot of the like Sarah J Mass books alongside friends, like they were reading them at the same time. And it's just, it's really fun to do books that way. And so it's like, I hope that my reading bug is back and that I could join in on that. That would be really, that'd be really fun. That'd be really fun. Um, and then watching, okay, there will be, I promise no spoilers, but I have been watching the live action Avatar The Last Airbender. And I was, and am, I shouldn't say I was, I am a huge fan. That one's all scratched up now. I'm a huge fan of the original animated series. I love it. It's just, it's wonderful. It's sweet. And um, we don't talk about how awful the live action movie is that they tried to do. It was terrible. And so naturally, lots of people, myself included, have been very skeptical about um, this TV show adaptation. I am, I only have like an episode or episode and a half left. I'm going to finish it after I finish this whip and chat <laughs> filming. And I have not been looking at like other reactions or outside reactions at all. So oops, let me just smack that recording arm. Uh, and I just, so my own personal feelings, totally spoiler free um, so far is that I like it. You guys, I do. I am enjoying it. Um, there are things that I don't necessarily care for. Um, like some of the ways that I feel like they're just by nature, they're having to combine a lot of things and plot points and things that didn't necessarily happen concurrently or things that just won't translate as well. Like I totally get all of that. And it's like, well, there are just, I, I knew that going into this, that there are so many parts of this that I just don't think are going to translate because an animated show, an anime versus a live action, you just, you can't, but I would, you know, did I just place drills wrong again? I don't think I did, but I'm just having a moment now. Where I'm doubting myself. Okay. Um, but no, honestly, like seven-ish episodes in, I'm loving it. The nostalgia is totally there for me. Um, I'm liking it more than I'm disliking it. If I were like so far, haven't watched the last episode, episode and a half, I would give it like a four, four and a half out of five stars. If we're looking like, it's a, that's like the book scale. <laughs> but um, I, yeah, I'm enjoying it. There's one of my favorite things about it is they're doing a lot of um, music cues that are from the original series. This isn't giving anything away. The credits, even the music over the credits is the same. Well, it's, I think they like redid it, but it's the same, you know, concept. <laughs> um, and there have been some other musical cues to like some really emotional and impactful things that happened in the animated show that like at one point, like I was like tearing up. I was like, oh my gosh, this is totally a throwback to like this thing. Um, and there's certain, you know, certain parts of the casting, I think that they did really, really well. So, and I think that if you never watched the original, the animated version, I think you would, you'd probably still enjoy it, but I wonder, I don't know if it would just sort of feel, I don't know if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't totally get it or I don't, I don't know if you've watched it, um, watch the live action without having seen the original animated version. I'd be so curious to hear if did it feel like there was just oodles of missing information or were you were you enjoying it anyway so if you are to share your thoughts in the comments i would just say maybe even spoiler free or give like a spoiler warning maybe for anyone that happens to be skimming through the show just came out like a minute ago and i don't want to ruin it for anyone 
Um, but, and then listening, uh, I've mostly been, um, listening to like a tree, like YouTube videos, like podcasts, basically. Um, I am, I have thoughts about, <laughs> this is kind of like in this category, I suppose. I have thoughts about Taylor Swift's new album that's coming out in April. Um, she keeps announcing like, and now there's this special edition that's going to have this exclusive song that's only on this edition. There's been like two or three of those now by this point. And I, it feels very unusual and out of character. And I'm wondering if she's got like a production company or someone else that's like deciding to do this, but there's starting to be some backlash in the comments of people being like, this feels like a money grab. This is weird. Um, in a way that doesn't, it, it seems like I said, kind of out of character, but I'm like, that's fine. I'm not buying a bunch of different versions. Can we please go back to just the days of just doing one deluxe version that has all of the extra tracks? That would be great. But what do I know? <laughs> that's just, that, that, that's my thoughts on that. Um, and then as far as what I have in mind for this week, I don't think I'm going to have another stash video up quite that quickly. I don't think it's going to be like, oh, and the next accessory stash video goes up this week. But reminder to please let me know your thoughts in the comments of would you like to see pens, washi, er, washi tape, so pens or washi tape or wax and putty. That's those are those are the ones I'm considering doing next. Um, let me know what you think. Um, but I have some unboxings. I picked up some of the uh, Diamond Art Club new releases from Amazon that, oh my gosh, there were some that were just too cute, too, too cute. So there may be an unboxing of those this week. And I have some other small shops that I would uh, potentially like to unbox as well. And uh, probably wouldn't hurt for, I don't know, like a review or a small shop haul, something to kind of mix it up and or another Craft Buddy sticker video, the mystery pack blind box kind of style video. I could show you how much I've gotten done in my uh, sticker album so far as well. I kind of see where my nose leads me, what, what I'm feeling as far as content goes this week. But we are at the end, you guys. If you made it all the way to the end, what should we do? Uh, how about an emoji that has pink in it because we were primarily working with pink colors here today. We got a good amount of this dragon's wing done. I'm really enjoying how it's coming together. There's a lot of confetti in some of these scales and wings. The sky and the section before this had tons of color blocking, but like the wings of the dragon and like the dragon has like pebbled skin. It's really confetti heavy, but I think it's, it's coming together beautifully. I'm loving the colors and it's like, I don't want to rush to finish it before the end of uh, February, but I'm going to, I think ex probably exclusively work on this one until the end of the month. And we'll just, as long as I'm enjoying it, that's great. And we'll see what happens as far as whether or not I, I finish it. <laughs> But anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know how you're doing, what you were working on while we chatted today. And if you made it all the way to the end and you're not already subscribed, you would probably enjoy it here. At the very least, you might enjoy my weekly whip and chats. Monday mornings are 99% of the time when these go up. Last week it went up on Tuesday because I was out of town. But uh, I'd love, love, love to have you here. All things diamond painting. And um, yeah, so anyway, you guys, have a... Start your week, a day, and a week that is as amazing as you are, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.